It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and as you can see, I've gone back to my regular camera angle that I've been using for most of my videos over the last couple of months. And honestly, I just thought it worked better for this particular video series, as well as the other two video series I do, Movie Stop and Talking About the Movies. Uh, not to say that, that the thing I bought down in North Carolina hasn't been working. It has done... It has done well for me over the last couple of days, and I figure I can use that for something that I'm going to be doing later on down the road this year, so I'm going to save it for that. I'm going to get back to using this camera angle for most of my videos, um, but uh, you don't want to hear, you're not here for that. You're here to hear, to hear me talk about the movies of March 1st, 1996, so uh, we got four movies to look at. Let's just get right to it. We're going to start off with the biggest new release of the weekend, and that is Robert Redford and Michelle Pfeiffer starring in Up Close and Personal. She was an unknown with nothing but ambition. You over here? He was the professional who'd done it all. You used to cover the White House. <laughs> you still get the coffee. If this is to tell me I have a lot to learn, I already know that. What she needed to know. She eats the lens. He taught her. What are you doing? This isn't about lipstick. This is about them. I'll tell you what to say. I know what to say. Well, then say it. Get in there. Jam the damn mic in his face. How do you answer allegations that you profited from drug money? Well, we keep it loose. We keep it open. We get lucky. Go. It's everything you ever wanted right up there. You got it. You know what I want. I've been here before. So have I. But then, everything changed. What's your feeling about Philadelphia? I don't want to go. Sure you do. You could come with me. I've already been where you're going. Where have all the good times gone? Philadelphia. Touchstone Pictures presents... I have a client in a certain amount of distress. This isn't about you and me. She's in trouble. You come up here and you fall. If I was into inventing people, believe me, I would have invented somebody a hell of a lot tougher than you turned out to be. I am exactly the way you made me. You can do it, and you're gonna do it, only you're gonna do it on your own. The story of a woman on her way up. Marry me. What? I want you around in the morning. You already had me around in the morning. I want to know you're legally required to be there. A man who helped her get there, and a love... There is no reason why it can't work. All you have to do is give it some space to work. They couldn't leave behind. This is Tally Atwater, reporting live. It calls for prison. Carol, stay against the wall, watch your back. She's the one who's out there on the line, and the only reason she's out there is to give you something to do. Actually, I've got something to do. Robert Redford. Do you want to be with me? So much it hurts. Michelle Pfeiffer. When I asked you how long you could stay, and you said long enough, how long is that? When we're not together. Up close and personal, a John Avnet film. And let's be honest, you know why this movie has any sort of memorability, and if you don't, watch this commercial for the film when the film came out, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. It was because of the song Because You Love Me from Celine Dion. I tried to put the commercial in the video, but every time I uploaded the video, the video got blocked, and it was because of that song there. So the song by Celine Dion was the reason why Up Close and Personal has any memorability to it whatsoever. So if you want to look for that commercial on there, be my guest. That's why it's popular. So anyway, back to the review. That song is the only relevant thing that ever came out of this particular movie. It was the, a big hit for Celine Dion. It was nominated for an Oscar for Best Original Song. That song is so important to this movie that they didn't even that that was part of their marketing campaign. Sell the song. Don't even bother selling the movie itself because, um, I would say the movie is bad, but I won't go that far. It definitely has a troubled production to say the least. This, the screenplay for this actually began as an adaptation of a book about uh, news anchor Jessica Savage and her troubled life and her and her eventual death in the 80s. This was actually based on an adaptation of that, but the film was heavily altered by the studio. Uh, a lot of decisions were made commercially to try to on the part of the producers to make it more more of a commercial picture. And in fact, the writers of this movie actually later wrote a book about talking about the experience it was having to make this movie called Monster Living Off the Big Screen, which basically talked about the total production of writing this movie. 
And it's not like the movie is bad or anything. Everyone here is trying their best. Robert Redford and Michelle Pfeiffer are doing the best they can here. But it definitely really does feel like that the movie is just a bland romantic drama that they're trying to sell as kind of an Oscar baitish type of movie. I mean, that trailer alone just just filled with so much Oscar baitish type of performances. You see these people just overacting too much where they're trying their hardest to try to make this work. And it really falls apart. I mean, someone wrote, someone made a good point that it's kind of more like A Star is Born than it is Network. It's kind of like a mix of Star is Born meets Broadcast News in a way. But it's not. It's, the point of this doesn't really actually amount to anything, honestly. It's a film that really... The effort is clearly there, but there's just nothing there that really makes it worth watching in the end. Plus, honestly, the story that they had originally could have easily made for a more compelling movie. Like, the story behind what happened with Jessica Savage is very intriguing. It's a very interesting story, and I was ho I'm hoping that one day somebody actually does a movie about her life, because that's a more engaging story than whatever the hell they were trying to sell in this movie here. Uh, maybe the people who wrote this still have that original script somewhere, or maybe Disney just bought it off of them and just said, you gotta do it this way, and it just doesn't work. It's a movie that is so lackluster, it's so boring, it's not a very good romantic drama, but, I mean, despite the best efforts of both Refford and Pfeiffer, it's just a boring movie. It's a movie that tries its hardest to try to get something interesting out of it, but it never really amounts to anything in the end, and... Really, the original story that they had was so much more compelling and so, so much more interesting that it could have made for a much better movie, but we got this movie, and for what it is, it's just a passable movie, but really, the only memorable thing you're going to take from this is the Celine Dion song, and that's pretty much all you get from it. Um, that's pretty much all you have for you on that one, so that's up close and personal. Let's move on to the next movie that we have here, and that is Kelsey Grammer in the naval comedy Down Periscope. The Navy has just assigned the USS Stingray a new crew. Get your hands off of me! Skilled in military technology. God, that's a little tickle. <laughs> dedicated to teamwork <laughs> and camaraderie. There was a fingernail in my food yesterday. It was a band-aid! I'm sorry, sir. Band-aid was holding the fingernail on. And they're about to get the leader. Uh-oh. They truly deserve. Third in his class at sub-school. We're dead. Cited for tactical excellence. We have a shooting solution. He's one of the Navy's finest. I won! Oh, get up there, you miserable little puke. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Thomas Dodge. May I pick up my new submarine? So do you need anything from me? Driver's license, credit card. There she is right now. Your new boat. No disrespect to the USS Rustolium here, but this is ridiculous. Now, together. It's the crew from hell. What do you think about our boat, Pasco? I feel I need a tetanus shot just from looking at it. They'll rise to any challenge. Lieutenant Blake, you're almost out of uniform. But you never saw anything like that on one of them big nukes. And prepare for the mission. You're gonna clean up the stingray and take her out. What's our mission? Rescue Gilligan? That will make their careers. These men love me! Whoa! Don't go by the book. Think like a pirate. Let's kick this pig. One rebel diesel. Prepare for dive. Does he mean underwater? <laughs> Against the U.S. nuclear navy. Torpedoes are hot. You are targeted. Battle stations. Not negative. Up against incredible odds. We're on us, sir. <laughs> It's up to the crew of the USS Stingray. It's the Orlando. All hands, we are now going silent. To use their unique talents. Hear something? That sounds like a whale. Heck <laughs> with a false alarm. To beat the Navy at their own. Fire two! What? War game. Swing! 20th Century Fox presents the movie the Navy doesn't want you to see. You ever hear the mild deep club? You ever hear the salad bar? Kelsey Grammer. Polishing the old torpedo, sir. God, I love this job. Down Periscope. What are you doing? As little as possible, sir. Buckman! What's up? Thank you, Buckman. That'll be all. 
So this is directed by David Ward, who also gave us Major League and King Ralph, and also wrote the scripts for The Sting, which he won an Academy Award for, as well as Sleepless in Seattle. And this is actually the last movie he directed before he eventually went back to just writing and producing movies. But the um, film was not a big hit critically, but it was a hit financially. And I gotta say, man, this movie is pretty damn funny. It's a really funny movie, and I think it works because of the cast that they assemble here. First off, you got Kelsey Grammer in one of his few leading roles in a, in a comedy. I don't think he'd had any other big ones after this. Like, this was right this was right in the middle of his run on Frasier. He comes after Cheers, and this was actually, I believe, the first theatrical release where he had a leading role in it. I could be wrong on that, but that's what I see on Wikipedia here. But he's really good in here playing Thomas Dodge. I mean, he's very funny. He, has a, he plays the role very well. He has a lot of great funny moments in here. He works off the cast very well here. Great cast overall. You got Lauren Holly in here, Rob Schneider, Bruce Dern, Harry Dean Stanton, William H. Macy, Rip Torn, uh, Ked Hudson Campbell, Toby Huss, uh, Harlem Williams is in here, as you see in there, Patton Oswald as well. Just a terrific cast in this movie, and they work off each other very well here. Story wise, we've seen this story done pretty much before. Like, we've seen it done on The Simpsons as well. Well, they made it, at least when they riffed Crimson Tide. And it's basically a comedic version, sort of, of Crimson Tide in a way. But it is still a very funny movie. It doesn't have to be clever by any means necessary, but it's just very funny. Like, it's very funny what they do here. The jokes in here do work very well. There is a lot of stupid comedy, and stupid comedy can be really funny if it's done very well here. And they got the right actors to do it with. Uh, the writing overall is very, is very solid. It's a very solid film. It doesn't do anything that is anything groundbreaking or unique, but it does make you laugh a lot. I've really laughed a lot with this movie. I thought it was a very fun film overall, and uh, I really recommend it. If you haven't seen this movie, definitely check it out. I think it's one of the more underrated comedies that came out in the 90s, Like, especially when, since you had some other comedies like this that were set around the Navy and all that stuff. Like We had the McHill's Navy movie that came out the year afterward, which was not very good, and... Um, yeah, it's a pretty funny movie, and I kind of wish Kelsey Grammer got a chance to do more leading roles in movies like this. After this, he done like he was doing more like supporting roles in films. Which, I mean, it's Kelsey Grammer, man. I mean, the guy could read the phone book, and he could make it as he could make it so good that you'd have to give him an Emmy for it. Like it's basically the, it's a similar to Brian Cranston. Like anytime Brian Cranston does anything, you like here's your here's your award. Go ahead and do do whatever you want. Like that's what Kelsey Grammer was back in the day, and he still is. Like Kelsey Grammer, man. Like, he's an amazing guy. Like, he is really, really damn good as an actor. And I'm not just saying this because I recently got his autograph. I've been saying that for years and years now. So, um, uh, by the way, if you want to see that video where I got where I got the autograph, uh, check, uh, check the corner. But, um, uh, anyway, back to the subject at hand here. Down Periscope. Uh, pretty funny movie, man. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. So, that's Down Periscope. Let's move on to the next movie that we have here, and that is Man of the Year. My tongue. Do you know, I can do that in 15 seconds. Well, I mean, sometimes less. It depends on who I'm thinking about. <laughs> hey, are we going to have to tie you down over there? <laughs> so anyway, where we? Oh, yeah. So I just kept thinking about Dirk Schaefer all the time, you know? I mean, it was weird how he kept popping back into my life. Like that time that he was on Jenny Jones. Oh, we realized right away he was good at improvising on the talk shows. It's not every year we get such a good spokesperson. And let's face it, this was the year of the talk show. Betty and I got busy, and we booked him on every show we could find. The Joan Rivers show called. They were doing a show, supermodels and their fans. They already had Fabio, and they wanted Dirk to come on the air and meet his number one fan. I asked Dirk, who was your number one fan? Um, I'm like Bridget Nielsen. You know, she tracked down Sly Stallone. She ends up marrying him and becoming a star herself. So obviously this is not the Robin Williams movie that came out 10 years after this by Barry Levinson. No, this is a different kind of man of the year. It's a very interesting story when I did the research on this. Apparently, uh, the director of this, and the guy who's the main focus of this, Dirk Schaefer, uh, this is kind of a, based on his real-life story. He was an American model, actor, screenwriter, and director, but he was most noted in the modeling world for it being in Playgirl magazine. He was the 1992 man of the year. And Schaefer said that he did play girl for validation as a model because he never believed himself to be attractive. And he wrote the story about being a semi-closeted gay man in the world of a heterosexual sex symbol. And his next movie that he did after this, Circuit, basically did a fictional look at the world of gay male circuit parties. So 
it's a pretty interesting concept for a, for a mockumentary film that they did this. Like, you see a lot of the talk shows in this particular trailer. They have on here Donahue, The Maury Povich Show, Jerry Springer Show. Uh, it's a recreation of events like the Playgirl photo shoots, fantasy date with a Playgirl reader, the death of his friend, of an AIDS-related illness to relate to the story. It's an interesting concept of a film. I don't really know too much about it. I haven't seen it, obviously, so I can't really go into it as much, but... I gotta say, the premise is very intriguing here, and I see a lot of good things about it on these reviews here, so maybe there actually is something kind of amusing about this. Um, it's not something I go rush out to see, but it definitely has some pretty fun ideas to it that probably makes for a very entertaining movie, so... Uh, that's pretty much all I got on that one. That's Man of the Year, so let's move on to the last movie that we have here, and that is The Neon Bible, starring Jenna Rollins. Unfortunately, that's the only bit of footage I can get there because there was no trailer for it online. Uh, what this is is a film based off of a novel by John Kennedy Toole. It follows a boy named David, played by Jacob Tierney, who coincidentally his old, he plays uh, Drake Bell plays a ten year old version of this kid. Drake Bell, of course, from Drake and Josh. Uh, his abusive father, play, father played by Dennis Leary, enlists in the army during World War II and disappears, leaving David to take care of his mother, Diana Scarwood, and his aunt May, played by Jenna Rollins, who is a singer, and you see. General Rollins singing in that, and uh, that's pretty much everything I know about this movie. I really knew nothing about it until I knew that this was going to be one of the movies I was going to look at. So naturally, I haven't seen the film, so I can't really say too much about it. Uh, I looked at that little clip there. It's got some potential. I mean, Jenna Rollins, I don't usually hear her sing all that much, so it was interesting to hear her sing there. Dennis Leary usually is a very good actor. Um... That's uh, that's pretty much all I got for you on this one. I don't really have too much more to go in on that one, but um, wanted to bring that one up since that was the last film that came out this weekend. So that is the Neon Bible. And so on that note, that wraps up another edition of Time About the Movies. We've got uh, a lot of movies to look at on the next episode. Uh, we've got notable films as well, including Nathan Lane and Robin Williams in the comedy The Birdcage, the American remake of La Caja Fool. We also have the sequel to Homeward Bound, Homeward Bound 2, Lost in San Francisco. Another Hellraiser movie, Hellraiser Bloodline, uh, If Lucy Fell, The Coen Brothers Fargo, which ended up being one of the best movies of the year, the re-release of Heavy Metal from 1981, The Star Maker, uh, Chung King Express, and also Love Lessons. So nine movies overall to look at on the next episode. So we're going to be very busy on the next episode, which will be out tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that. And with that said... Thank you very much for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, uh, please hit the playlist on the next page, check out the previous episode, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for another episode. So thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and until then, as always, take care.